Hello everybody and welcome to another Blender tutorial. I am Vitek from Virtual Studio and this time I will try to show you how to create this kind of effect. Let's not waste any time and jump right into the Blender. As you can see, I won't start with an empty scene for this time. I've already downloaded a model of a character with walk cycle from Mixamo.com. You can use for example Make a Human or any of your animations. This tutorial is only about the effect, not how to animate. Ok, in order to slice this guy, we will need some planes and boolean modifier. Let's start with one plane. Switch to the edit mode and place the plane pretty much vertically, so later we can just move it along the y axis. You don't have to be precise here at all, just keep in mind that from the front view, the character should be inside the silhouette at all times. If you scale it on the x-axis as me, put a loop cut in the middle to have a nice even geometry. That's pretty much all for the modeling. Now let's just put on it some modifiers and simple animation node setup. First give the slice some thickness with the solidify modifier. Now we can already make the magic happen with boolean intersections. Hide the original body and it may seem like we are almost done. Before we continue, fix the shading with auto smooth normals. You may already see some frames where the boolean doesn't work properly. But before we address that, let's finish the setup. The cut is just too flat for my taste. So turn off the boolean for a minute and introduce a bit of waviness with the displacement modifier. Put it right after the solidify, set it only to Y direction, global coordinates and create a new cloud texture. To actually see some result we will need much more geometry. So place also subsurf modifier on the top. Five simple subdivisions should be enough. In the texture settings, play with the size and contrast until you have what you want. You can activate the boolean again. And as a surprise for later, put another displacement after it, set it to x-axis with zero strength and leave it alone. Well, now it's time for the animation nodes. Create a new tree and set the auto execution to only when something is changed. We need something like an array modifier, so start with instancing the object. To copy also the modifiers, check the copy full object and also get rid of the original. I think I will use uh, about 9 stripes and to keep it easy to edit later, I will add the number as its own node. Placing of the instances will be managed by the transform output node. Activate the location and add a combined vector node. Now we need a list of values for the y axis. Add the float range node and I will turn off the boolean again just to see what I am doing. Ok, let's continue. The float range will be from start to stop. The amount is of course the number of instances. And stop will be whatever you want, I will go with 1.4. And don't include the endpoint, that's just so it will loop nicely and the first and last won't end up in the same place in one frame. Now I will unhide also the guy and as you can see we need to offset the placement so he is in the middle of the slicer. Subtracting half of the length should do the trick. The movement itself will be also super simple, just adding some value. But if we just add the value, the whole slicer is moving away. We need to somehow loop it, so the last plane will replace the first one and so on. It's actually easier than it sounds, just restrict the value with the modulo of the length. The animation is also simple. Run the time info through the map range node. The whole animation has 62 frames, so the input max will be 62 and the output max will be the length of the slicer. 
Everything should work now. Activate the boolean again and hide the original guy. Well, that's the effect. But there is a lot of errors, mainly because of the intersecting geometry after the armature deformation. So let's get rid of it. I will turn off the animation nodes for now, hide the slices and unhide the guy. Uh, now it's good time to say that this method is really bad and it will kill the performance. So if you know better one, please let me know in the comments. First some more geometry. One subdivision have to be enough. Then I will duplicate him and this is the one where we will look for the intersections. I will also need another one, a bit smaller, so we have some threshold from the surface. Smaller just mean displacement with negative strength. Ok, let's create a new animation nodes tree. Again, auto execution only when something changes. We need to look at points inside the geometry. So attend is inside volume node, it needs a bvh tree, so construct one. It's constructed from a mesh information, so add a mesh input with use modifiers, pick the slim guy and change the output to vertex locations and polygon indices. We need the points that we want to check, so add another mesh input and pick the intersection guy. Use 3D Viewer to see what's happening. Connect the vertex locations and you will see all the points of the intersection guy. And if we now mask this list with our result, you should see only the vertices that are inside the slim guy. Now we just need to get rid of them. Real talk here, I have absolutely no idea how to do it simply. If you do, please let me know. I will just show you now a really ugly workaround. First, I will convert the R inside boolean list to float. It's a list of values, so I will use a loop. Iterator will be boolean list and output will be float list. The whole tree will be just one switch. If it's true, it will be one. If not, it will be zero. That's all now. We have a list of floats. I would like to use them as vertex weights. So select the original guy and give him a new vertex group. Well, I didn't find any node that can output a vertex weights and the script node keep crashing on me. So we have to use an expression and try to write the code in one line. Inputs will be the float list as weights and the original guy object as guy. We need a for loop in one line, so it has to be in square brackets. To get the weight value and its index at the same time, we can use two variables and enumerate the weights. In this weird one line syntax, we can now say what we want to do with the variables in front of the for loop. We will find the vertex group on the guy by its name and then run an add function on it. Don't worry, the expression is in the video description. But I highly encourage you to look at Blender API and try to understand what is happening. Well, this is all for the animation nodes. Hide the intersection and slim guys, even for render, and select the original. If you add the mask modifier on him with the right group, you should see only the intersecting geometry. Invert the influence and the intersections are gone. But now we have holes in our model. Again, there has to be a better method. Maybe an experimental sculpt branch could solve all these troubles. But for now, slap a remesh modifier on it and crank it until your PC starts to burn. For me, the limit is 8. Well, almost done. Hide him and unhide the planes. Be prepared that any frame change will take a while. The effect is done, now just the materials. Create two slots, one for outside, one for inside. This tutorial is already too long, so play with the shaders as you want. Uh, just two things, for the outside material I've used a random value from an object info node. And the second important thing, don't forget to put the outside material on the original guy. Well, that's all. The render is all up to you. I will just recommend to bake the animation nodes first. Just one bonus at the end. Do you remember the displacement that doesn't do anything? You can use it to move the pieces after slicing. 
you need just attribute output node with the displacement strength and you can put there any values you want. Random, sine wave, whatever, go wild. That's definitely all. Thank you very much for watching, until the next time, happy blending.